Hi, I'm Christine Benz. I'm live at The Money Show in San Francisco. I'm joined today by Janet Brown. Janet is the CEO of Fundex Investment Group. Janet, thank you so much for being here. Nice to be here with you. Thank you. Janet, we had kind of a spooky week, a uh, very big sell-off midweek. Yeah. And what happened was that the yield curve, the bond yield curve inverted ever Two and so ten. briefly. Yeah. So let's talk about why uh, or whether investors should be concerned about that potentially portending uh, recessionary environment going forward. Yeah, well, we will have another recession. We don't know when it'll be. I think growth still looks good. We have had inverted 2 and in 10 yield curves five times before, since 78, I think it is. Each one of those times was followed by a recession. However, the, reset, the average duration between the inversion and the recession was 22 months, nearly two years. The performance of the S&P 500 between the point of inversion and the onset of recession, the total return performance was plus 15%. So it's not necessarily an indication that e markets are going to sell off. And certainly bonds have been very strong right. during this. They've you know, gotten a real good boost. So my advice to investors would be not so much spend your time forecasting. We at Fundex really don't spend a whole lot of time forecasting. Rather, our focus is on trying to identify what's working now and really staying with it. Both on the stock side, the bond, the bond side, I believe most investors are better off with a balanced portfolio. Okay, so use the opportunity of the recent volatility to kind of maybe check up on your portfolio's your asset, asset allocation. Asset allocation, I would think it's always best to position for a variety of outcomes. If you're sure, you know, I don't think anybody's sure, frankly, right. going back to my no forecasting. I just think it's far safer to consider risk primarily. Number one, it should be risk. After that, allocate your assets in leadership now. I mean, the bond market's a really good example of that. I think it's been most of the last decade that people have been expecting interest rates to go up. Right, and so they've been spooked and maybe Many holding cash instead of have bonds. not participated in the really strong returns in the fixed income market because they've been expecting rates to go up and they've been short term and not participating. Right. On the other hand, at Fundex, what we are doing is identifying first by risk and then by what's doing well. So happily we have participated because we've been able to be in the areas that are doing well. I mean, who would have thought this year bonds would be up, you know, ADG is up, what, 8 or 9% year to date? The Barclays Aggregate Index. Right, and things like uh, LQD, the liquid corporate, high quality corporate, is up, I think, 15% year to date. That's more than a year's worth of gains yeah, for bonds, that's right. for sure. And so by not spending so much time forecasting, rather identifying, we're able to follow some of those trends. Okay, quick question for you, Janet. One question I think investors are wrestling with is foreign equity exposure as a percentage of their portfolio. Yes. That's something that has it has not worked as well as investing mm -hmm. in the U.S. So how do you counsel investors um, who might be tempted to kind of just say forget about overseas I diversification? I love this question because that's one thing that we are global managers and at times we go up to 80% international, believe it or not. There have been periods in the last 50 years since we've been managing money that we have been, I think the highest was about 80%. Okay. We have, we've been domestic, primarily large cap growth for much of the last decade because that's where the returns have been. There have been a couple of short periods when international funds came up the ranks, but for the most part it's been a domestic market. I would counsel people again not to try and forecast that. I know a lot of people are now thinking emerging markets are undervalued. Right. 
they could stay undervalued for a while longer, frankly. I mean, with the trade tensions, with much going on, I think it's just awfully dangerous to position in advance. We wait for a trend to be confirmed. We have a very systematic way of ranking and sorting funds, first by risk and then by performance. Our system over the last 40 years has identified a few international periods that last a while, by the way. Typically, these domestic international trends last four or five years. So, and it may not be four or five years, but if it's a couple years, you can incrementally reposition with what's doing well coming up the ranks and participate. I just would caution against forecasting jumping in at this stage. Um, it could be risky. Okay, Janet, always great to get your perspective. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And thanks for watching. I'm Christine Benz at The Money Show.